All right, welcome to this part two of basics for InDesign. In the last video, we learned how to put in text. So if you didn't watch that video, make sure you go watch that one because you really wanna know how to use the text box and implementing text before you get to the images. But what we're gonna look at in this one is using this text and using um, this rectangle tool to insert images. So obviously in a newspaper, images are critical and we wanna make sure we put them in here and make sure they look right. So one of the things we need to do first is click on our rectangle tool and you can make any rectangle shape. We're not gonna worry about um, curved shapes, things like that yet. We'll do that in an, in an advanced video. But for this video, we're gonna take a look at just how to use one of these. Now, the nice thing about these rectangle shapes is again, you can resize them however you want. You wanna be kind of cognizant of what's happening with the relationship to your text. So first things first, this is just a blank empty placeholder. Okay, nothing is happening with it yet. However, there's a lot of things we can do related to how it functions with the other content on the page. So here you can see a whole bunch of different areas. You can arrange things. You can send it to the back. You might have done that with like on a um, pages document or a Word document. You can send it areas. You can lock it to a certain place. You can do a stroke around the edge of it. A stroke looks like a darker line, if you see here. So now there's actually kind of a darker area around it. You can uh, look at the different fitting options. You can um, do all sorts of just different kind of quick actions there that you might want to have. Now, one of the things that we want to do with our boxes is go up to Window and then go up down to this one that says text wrap. This is the one you're gonna use all the time is text wrap. And so now you're gonna get this nice little um, selection area over here. And this allows us to basically tell the shape what it's gonna do when it experiences text. So right now you'll notice the shape goes right over text. But if I do a different selection, so for instance, I say wrap around the bounding box. If I click on that, you'll notice the text goes away. The text moves away from the shape. Wherever I put it, the text automatically moves away from it. So that's obviously really critical because if you put a picture in and you put it over the text, the reader can't read the text. So you wanna make sure that it pushes that information away. Now, depending on the different shape in future videos, you might actually wrap it around an object shape. So if it's like a curved object, you will select this one instead of this one. Now the next most important thing about this is you want to set how far away the text is. So right now notice it's right up next to it and that's pretty tight. Once you get an image in there, it might not look right. So what we wanna do is click this and notice how it pushes out the text from the shape. If you only wanna do it to one side of the shape, you unlock this just by clicking on it. And you can just do, for instance, from the bottom, you'll notice there's a box and then the arrow, and then it's saying from the bottom offset. We can just push out the bottom, which is helpful. Or we might just push out either of the sides. So generally you can keep it just locked. And then again, it'll you can click from anywhere and it'll just match it. But that allows you to um, basically push the text away. Generally, you can just do it once or twice, and that's plenty of uh, wrap around the box. Again, there's more advanced features with that, and we'll look at those later. Okay, so we have our box, and it's pushing away the text, so that's good, but we need an object in here. So with the box selected, what I need to do is go File, and I'm going to Open, excuse me, I'm going to place any picture. So I have all these different pictures in here because I've made some logos for people. So I'm gonna choose this one because you're writing your article surely about the Buffalo Bills. And you'll notice I implemented this picture, but if you know what the picture actually looks like, it's a lot bigger than this. And that's one thing you'll notice. If I double click on it, you see suddenly this 
uh, kind of burnt orange box come up, that's telling you how big the actual picture is. And what you can do now that that burnt orange box is up is I can click at any edge and pull it down. But notice, here's a problem. I can accidentally stretch this if I just try to freehand this, and then it can look like this, which doesn't look good at all. So with Control Z, I can go back. The other way I can adjust this is by holding down Shift and then left clicking. And no matter where I put my cursor, it keeps it in proportion. Then I can move the bottom in proportion. And now that looks, it looks correct, okay? Because it's still in proportion. And I can actually just hand move it. Notice, as long as I'm on that burnt orange box, that selection box, I can move it around and this blue box doesn't move. That's really critical. Okay, but let's go back and pretend that we just imported this and it's not the right size. The quicker option here also is that we can, on this box, left, right click, excuse me, right click, and then go down to fitting. And we can say any of these different fitting options. So we can do fill frame proportionately. And that's what that looks like. That looks really pretty good. We can also say fill content proportionately. And notice that ended up cutting off a little portion of it because what that's saying is I want to see all of this picture and I will adjust the box later. So generally what you'll probably want to do for our sake is fill the frame proportionately. That might cut off a little bit of your picture, but it's going to adjust to your frame. So first you design the frame and then put in the picture. The last option there is under fitting content aware fit. And it's going to try to do its best to fit how it thinks you would want it to look. So it uses a little bit of the computer intelligence to think that this is the best look for the picture. At that point, here's your picture. You have your picture. I can move it around. I can put it to the side. I can put it, you know, right next to it, whatever I want to do. And that's ultimately going to inform us what this page looks like, right? And what we want to design it for, all that kind of stuff. The key thing with um, working with a box like this is really paying attention to what color you see around the box. So right now, if the color is blue, it is just that picture area, and I can still adjust that how I want. Again, I can go fitting, and I can say fill frame proportionally. And then I could double click, and I can even use my arrow keys, and I can just, I'm just typing on my arrow key, and I can drop that down ever so subtly. And now maybe this is the picture that's the headline for this page. And I can kind of go from there how I want. So that's the basics of how to put in a picture and then make it fit to your page. If I need to delete the picture, I can keep the box just by double clicking and then pushing delete, not backspace, but delete on my keyboard. And notice the frame is still there but the picture's now gone, rather than deleting the whole frame and having to put the frame back in. So when you work with the templates, don't delete the blue frame. Right now, if I push delete, it deletes the frame. Just double click, get that amber or burnt orange outline. And now if I push delete, that frame is still there. So with those two different features, you really have the basics for how to make a page. In the next video, I'll show you some more um, different elements that you'll need to know for the basics of just how to make a page. And I'll bring in a template to show you what a template looks like and how you adjust those. The templates are super nice because they give you all of the fonts, all of the necessary components, and then you can just kind of tweak those and work with them as you think is important.